So I've muted everyone. This is the best part of every meetup when I, when I get to meet all, mute all of you all. That's that's so fun. So um, <laughs> welcome to Mute City, and welcome to Bitcoin VR meetup number nine. I think it's number nine. I, I'm not good with numbers. I think it's number nine. Uh, but thank you for joining us, everyone who's here. I think we broke a record again. So we're like 80 people here. So thank you for everyone who came here. And thank you for everyone who was watching on the live stream. And yeah, if you enjoy these meetups, then you should join us on our Telegram group, which is uh, uh, VR Bitcoin on Telegram. That's t.me slash VR Bitcoin. And we announce all the future meetups there. So you should be there. Um, yeah, uh, just a couple of notes. So first, please try not to move around too much and definitely try not to obstruct the view for people next to you. Um, so be careful in that. Don't stand on the chairs, please. <laughs> Thank you. But, but other than that, you can be like on the chairs here or there's like a large area behind the chairs that you can stand there too if you want. Um, and even though you can't move a lot, you can still express yourselves by showing emojis, which you're already doing. So that's awesome. And yeah, so today we have the magical crypto friends. So um, you might be able to guess by their colors. Um, we have Ricardo Spani here. Is that Spani? Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, that's oh, excellent. Thank Spani. You. Yeah, I Spani. made it. Fluffy Pony and Spani. Well Panda over here. Um, Charlie Lee and Samson Mao and they're the magical crypto friends and uh, this is their first time in VR I think I mean together that's their first time together in VR that's looks true. like it yeah yeah did you guys I know some of you had VR headsets before but like some of you just got them a few days ago Charlie just got his right yeah got mine last week or this so week, are you like playing VR games or is that I don't know, not something that you do. I, no, I just, I just did a porn. Of course, <laughs> of course, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, that's that's good that you're honest about it. I think that we can all be open here. Uh, Fluffy seems to have. So, Fluffy, which headset are you on right now? Or is uh, that top my, secret information? No, I'm on a Valve Index. I want that one. But they won't. They won't send it to where I live, so I, I have to deal with an Oculus. So okay. yeah, I mean, for for simple stuff like Beat Saber and that, you're not going to notice enough of a difference. Yeah, I guess not. I guess not. So, what's your favorite game? So I've been playing uh, a lot of Synth Riders multiplayer, um, especially now during lockdown. Uh, I can play that uh, like with family and friends, and then Box VR. Been playing that a lot, um, and uh, yeah, I, I kind of and yeah, like I play a lot of Beat Saber, but that's just more for fun. So the rest are like business. The... <laughs> you well, you can't play Beat Saber <laughs> multiplayer. Although my yeah. wife and I do play Beat Saber multiplayer, like we're, when we're in the same room, I'm on the index, she's on the quest, um, oh, wow. and then we like play the same level, and that's fun. How do you manage like the safety risks involved? I mean, she's just on a different side of the room. Like that's good. But although I, I do have to admit, the other day she like tried to grab a dog ball whilst I was playing Beat Saber, and I smacked her on the head. Totally not my fault. It's not a case of domestic <laughs> violence. You don't have to call the cops. But I did feel very embarrassed about it afterwards. I, I, I like to hear that from her. It would be easier to trust. But okay, that's fine. Don't trust her. I. I, I I saw Samson posting some tweets with Beat Saber attempts. Not very good attempts, but attempts. What? <laughs> <They're good. laughs> no, you're good. Actually, you're good. You're better than I am. I think that's true. But maybe I don't know. Better. Is anyone is anyone playing Beat Saber here? It's a joke. I know you all are. No, no one's buying a VR headset and playing Beat Saber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know who's the best, but but someone is. So that's, that's many, enough about many VR games. Game. Eh? Many, yeah. Yeah, Manny is really good. Yeah, he's excellent. Is Manny yeah. here? I don't know if he's here. Manny is really good with, uh, with Beat Saber. Yeah, I've seen him play like physically. That, that's a sight. So, okay. Um, 
I guess if we move aside from VR for a moment, so there are actually, I don't know, last week not a lot happened in cryptocurrency land, but this week there are kind of a lot of things going on. So Binance bought CoinMarketCap, which is a big deal. How, how long was CoinMarketCap around for? Scam? I, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything. CoinMarketCap is old. Like, is that... Very old, yeah. Charlie, when Litecoin started, was, was CoinMarketCap already around? Yeah, I think so. Damn. It was... That's... Yeah, it's pretty... That's old. 20, 2012 or 2013? No, I think was it was yeah. around 20, in 2011. I Jeez. think so. I don't remember. Huh. I have to go check. Probably. So what, what do you guys think about Binance getting acquiring CoinMarketCap? Panda, you're, you're awfully quiet. Well... <laughs> I, 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 it's, it's like Ricardo said, it's a scam by a scam. I, I don't really see the point for them to, to buy it. Um, I, I guess it's to make sure that the, their fake volumes don't get deleted from CoinMarketCap. Yeah, I, I, I honestly don't, don't know. Um, I, I guess it, they, they do have a lot of... Um, they do have a lot of coverage, like when you see so, someone in... Uh, in uh, Mainstream media um, quote like the Bitcoin price. They always say like, ah, oh, it's taken from Coin Market Cap or something like that. So um, I guess that might be the reason why they bought it. Other other than that, I have no idea why. And especially not at four hundred million valuation. That's crazy. Oh, that is a crazy valuation. Unless they That's bought it, it's BNB. Then it's like, okay, here's some <laughs> scam tokens that we just printed. Yeah. Well, you know, if, like if, if it's, it's if you can sell it. It's not unlikely yeah. it's probably a BND deal. But I think from an exchange point of view, it makes sense for them to buy it because it's getting harder and harder to differentiate as an exchange these days. There's a lot and uh, most people don't know what to really look for. They just look for ads and CMP does have a lot of um, viewers and uh, I guess users. Yeah. Well, I uh, also, Binance is now trying to do everything, like they're trying to launch a mining pool as well, a Bitcoin mining pool, um, and right. some other things also. So I, I guess they're trying to expand vertically. Yeah, I guess they are. How do they get, how, how, how do you start a new mining pool? I don't know. I could start a new mining pool. Why not? Do they like, give up to, to miners? Pool. Yeah, that's like, that's the challenging part. Yeah, just you would disabled. call it Justin and friends. What's that? I, I guess you would call it Justin and friends or something like that. Or yes, Justin. Justin or... Just mining. Tron, just Tron mining. <laughs> Those are all great names. Yeah, I'll, I'll use that. Okay, so that's Binance. Um, and I guess well, another thing that's happening. It's not funny. You guys are gonna joke about it, but it's not funny that people are losing jobs and people are oh, no. lost their jobs. Um, really? I missed that. Yeah. I mean, not everyone. Anymore. Oh, dude. How many, <laughs> you know, I've, now that I'm not, not on Twitter that much, like I keep missing important news, like people at Bitcoin.com lost jobs. That is bad. Shame. Poor Roger. Well, okay. Okay. So let, let me explain. So um, it, it was reported on um, Carando or something. It was a website and they, um, like a sort of HR website, like job seeker website. Um, and it was user generated content. So it was someone who actually said like 50% of Bitcoin.com um, mm. was laid off. Uh, so I don't know how reliable that was, but at the same time, um, yeah. at the same time, Roger um, said in an, art, like, uh, in an interview that they're going for a linear approach. It basically confirms that it's real. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. And, and Stefan, yeah, Stefan Rust, <laughs> the CEO of Bitcoin.com, left or got fired or he was a guy who added hex, you know. Um, oh, yeah. Jeez. But, 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 but I, I, I guess it makes sense because it, I, I think they're losing so much money just because they have so many different things and no one's using them. They have the local Bitcoin, <laughs> um, which no one uses. Uh, and they have their Bitcoin exchange that no one uses. Um, yeah, Ricardo, very expensive. <laughs> why, God, why? 
fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Bitcoin com having has to do something has something to do with the uh Bcash having. Because if they are huh. all in and they're mining it, then they probably need to cut their cost ahead of schedule. That's my guess. Did the did the Bcash halving start yet? Because it, it's before the Bitcoin halving, right? It's like yeah, next it's like week, three days. days. Yeah. Three, three days. Ooh. <laughs> ah, a few days. Sure. Well Panda knows an awful lot about the Bcash halving. I'm a trader. I need to know that kind of stuff. <laughs> Wait, I trade know the BSP is in four days. <laughs> and trader. You have, I'm a trader. You have BK. <laughs> <laughs> no, so are you, are you one of those who's trading shit coins in order to get more Bcash? Yeah. <laughs> more, more, you said, more you said yeah. yeah. You said yeah. More no, BSP. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Well, Bcash is great. It's it's great. Look, what you, we wouldn't have jokes without Bcash. I don't know why people have True. sad faces. There are a lot True. of funny things about Bcash, so it's great. And it's Ethereum, great we have this. Lots of funny things about Ethereum. Oh, don't get me started on Ethereum, please. <laughs> I had an argument okay. on Reddit with someone it's who still is a early. Web three engineer, and uh, he was insisting <laughs> that Ethereum is the best because he's a Web three engineer. Yeah, Web3. It just a never, of, uh, just never like quite theory. arrived. Web3 yeah, like the, those are the, <laughs> they can, that's all they can do. <laughs> yeah, so those are the same people that like JavaScript, right? Yeah. They like JavaScript, yeah, they, they, do they like, like it. that, and they like Ethereum. Exactly. Yeah. How many people here use Brave, the web browser, with a show of hands? There are some Brave souls. <laughs> Some okay, guys, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Out, out door, this is yeah. not going to end well for you guys. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> you know, you know, I have a kick button that I can use. No, I'm, I'm kidding. It's okay. You can. It's an it's open web. Bad, right? You can use whatever you want. Charlie, you too. No, I don't use. <laughs> he uses into yeah. the store, obviously. <laughs> edge, <laughs> edge, edge. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> edge now. <laughs> Edge. Edge is fine. I only use the Come Oculus on. browser. That's it? That's your new browser, your default? Every time you want <laughs> yeah. to check out a web page, you put on the, My the favorite headset? Browser. <laughs> yes, it uses the VR desktop. That's all you need, right? Yeah. Well, if, if the only yeah. thing you, you look up is, is uh, VR porn, that makes sense. That's true. <laughs> That's wow. true. Self-fulfilling prophecy right there. I only tweet with on in VR. That's my new thing. <laughs> I didn't even do that. In VR. How, how did, did, did you guys try to it? type in VR? That's the most yeah, horrible thing that exists. It's oh, not it's terrible. Terrible. You're just sending like, a point. message. Um, you just go oh. point, 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 point. Yeah. Yes. Especially when they it, ask like you to type a password and you need to type you can the password. Oh, yeah. so I need to pull out my phone and look at the password manager and yeah, then I start I, I, typing the password. Nice word, for example. Isn't your password just password though? Yep. Uh, my is. Yeah, mine is. Yeah, mine is. But it's just obviously for other people with a four. You know. His his password <laughs> is okay. Tron Tron Love One. <laughs> well, it depends. There, there one, are multiple services, so there's also Tron Love what Two the... and so on. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck did you just do? <laughs> what's what's oh, going on here? Straight straight in my headset. That's like there we go. All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> <It's> adjusting. <laughs> there we go. He's trying to fix his hair. You know. Oh my god. <laughs> Will Panda be one of the show this month because he says his hair is too long? Yeah, so... Uh, oh, really? <laughs> because, yeah, well, it's actually true because we're in lockdown, so all the hairdressers are closed. And my wife offered <laughs> to uh, cut my hair. I said, no, thank you. So I said, oh, good thing we don't have a show now because my hair is way too long. And, yeah. So I got my wife to cut my hair with, like, a, like a razor, number four shaver um, and I, that I ordered before we went into lockdown. Uh, and yeah. so it, just, it looks like a buzz cut, like military style. It looks, I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. It does so, not look great. So the usual. So now you're looking more like a soldier. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's missing that little thing at the top. That little yeah, thing. I'm missing the little floof. You know, the, the, the floof that comes yeah. up here and, the, and like the sort of foam. He's missing the clock. Yeah. The f ex uh, exactly. But exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look on the bright side. It's less obvious that you're gray now. So. 
That is a good point. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll concede. Now I kind of feel bad that we're not doing a video. I really want to do a video now. I'm just grateful new hair 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 hair. Yeah. My hairstyle there this, is great. Put the picture of him right now <laughs> on, behind us. Yeah, that would be cool. Yes, there's a picture of me already wearing a mask. That's all you need to know. I have a beautiful mane. Yeah, so it's a beautiful mask too. No, it's the, great. the weird thing about being in VR is that now I feel my cat all over me and I cannot see her, which is weird. <laughs> I feel like missing with my leg, and I'm assuming it's my cat. I hope it's my cat, but I have no idea. Could be a tiger. Or could be Do my, you own any my children, children as well, but they should be in bed. Yes. Uh, yeah. Great thing anyway, about you, you, you're not cutting their hair either? Oh, actually, we just cut my son's hair today. But I, no. I care more about my hair than about his hair, so... Uh. <laughs> Okay, Here's that's enough color. about hair, guys, yeah. I think. Yeah, um, so, so look, other than those two things, I mean, the, the cryptocurrency space is kind of slowing down. At least that's how it feels to me. I don't know if well, you guys are the same. Everyone's slowing down. Yeah, everything yeah. is, I guess. Down, so. Everything is, so... so I mean, like, I, I, read a stat, uh, I read a stat today that uh, it looks like at least 10 million people in the USA have lost jobs, lost their job oh, yeah. in the last two weeks, so... It's uh, it's not not a not a great time um, from an economy perspective, but I do think that uh, we're going to see val important values like self sovereignty coming out of this as being more important. That and privacy, the amount of government overreach that's happening during this crisis is frightening. So um, I, I I think that bodes well for projects like Bitcoin and does not bode well for projects projects like Ethereum that are built on the premise of like hype and garbage, you know, where people are right. going to want to just keep their stuff safe after this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys noticed, right. but on Twitter, there's very little shitcoin chatter these days. Mm, notice that. That's yeah. because you yeah, blocked all of them. Yeah, that's because <laughs> you guys blocked them all. <laughs> well, you either block them or they block you. It's a combination well, the, of both. The, bot, the ones that come and pop in and say, you know, hmm. I don't know, buy some right. shitcoin. Yeah. Those are gone too. I don't know, but that's I, weird. I because haven't seen those jobs should be doable remote. So I don't know. Yeah, Maybe the projects can uh, start Sam, out of funding. Samson, actually, I want to ask you something. Why is your hand behind your body? <laughs> oh, my arms are crossed. Is this better? Oh, okay. Oh wait, yeah. I don't have any, now you any, like three D perception, so I, I cannot see in three D. Okay. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> wait, like this. What do you mean? Yo, yo, yo! <laughs> Check it. No, I, I mean it, it looked like he had it like behind him. Yeah, I think it was behind him. Why are you touching me? <laughs> <laughs> Unclear. But okay, Unclear. so, so, so uh, behind him. On, on, that, on that same topic, uh, that's true. But at the same time, it's also very scary what's going on in the in the world. Yeah. Um, if if you hear like uh, in Italy from Giacomo and Mir, um, that people are reporting just people for going outside, and they say okay. they, they they should be more strict about it and. Um, like weld people in their apartments and stuff like that. Uh, okay, so, so you want to get... Fascists. Oh, yeah. dude, you want to get something about South African lockdown. Okay, so South Africa has been on lockdown now for eight days. And in those eight days, um, eight people have been killed by the police and the army during the enforcement of the lockdown. So that is more people Whoa. up until today when they announced the new corona death, uh, deaths, coronavirus deaths, uh, more people had been killed by police and army brutality than by the coronavirus. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty frightening. They're doing, they're now doing, um, uh, using cell phones to track you. Um, and they can track you all the way back to March the 5th. And if you test positive, they'll be able to see everyone you interacted with. Um, and what's frightening is, I mean, so we live in a small town, population of 30,000 people. You're not allowed to go outside to walk your dog. Okay, we get it. We're on lockdown. We walk our dog and dogs in the garden. It sucks, but it, you know you do it. And uh, unlike the neighborhood watch groups, there are people reporting other people for walking their dogs every day. Um, and and I, you know, again, like I get it. There's a lockdown. It's the law. You're supposed to be obeying the law. Like if it says don't walk your dogs, don't walk your dogs. But I mean, if someone's walking their dog around the block, like don't be a douchebag about it. Just 
check if they're walking their dog like with other people, if they're interacting, whatever. Just leave it if they're walking around the block. Well, the problem is like there's zero common sense. I'm sure everyone's seen the yeah. picture of that guy um, boarding and uh, he's like out on the ocean by himself all alone and then the, uh, what, some boat comes to get him and then they take him away yeah. and they're going to put him in jail. So you just uh, <laughs> have massive fails all around. It's like zero common yeah. sense. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, if there's this kind of surveillance going on, is this something that, I mean, is this really going though to, to drive people to like privacy solutions? Because as Fluffy mentioned, maybe this bodes well for Bitcoin and other privacy things. Um, but like, are people really going to, what, is, is it solving a problem for people? I, I don't think maybe in, uh, like people will realize it initially, but I do think that there's going to be a realization over time um, that, oh, oh, hold on, our civil liberties are being curtailed. Uh, already, like, if you start to see things like the, the, the cell phone tracking stuff, which is frightening, quite frankly, um, people are starting to realize that they need to be able to prevent that. And so like uh, Librem, um, Purism have a have a phone called the Librem, uh, what's the Librem phone or whatever it's called. Um, and yeah. uh, that has physical kill switches for Wi-Fi, GPS, uh, uh, LTE, etc. Um, and I think like those devices are going to become increasingly popular um, so that you don't have to switch the phone off. You can just physically, you know, like use the kill switch to effectively put it in airplane mode so that you can still play your games and whatever. And then when you need to, you can put it back on. Um, and people are going to become accustomed to that. I think um, mesh networking, uh, especially uh, BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy Mesh, and apps that take advantage of that, like fire chats, I think those are going to become increasingly popular and densely populated areas. Um, just because people but are what going about to... social distancing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm talking, I mean, like you can use a BLE mesh in, a, um, in an apartment building. Um, so it's, hmm. it's certainly possible. Um, and it's obviously, it's going to take time for people to realize the need for for this stuff to exist the need for them to use it. But the way I look at it is if you see the increase in the use of VPNs over the past, I don't know, maybe five years, like all of my non-technical friends, like people that, that can hardly use a computer um, and just barely get by using their cell phones, they're using a VPN. Um, like they just figured it out. They downloaded whatever, Easy VPN or iVPN. They saw an advert about it. They clicked on it. And they're running a VPN, no problem, because they heard that not running a VPN is bad, that your ISP can track you, that your government can track you. So they're doing it and they're not paranoid. These are, we're talking about like people who are, who live totally normal lives, have nothing to hide, but they're running a VPN. So as this stuff becomes more accessible, as the barrier to entry becomes lower, I do think we're going to see an increase in, in the use of these projects, which is great. Right. So you're betting that this goes on for a while, if people are going to have I the think, time to realize that. Well, now that they have like all the the software <laughs> and everything, why not? I mean, um, this is like never let a good crisis go to go to waste, right? Yeah. yeah. But, and and but listen, the, so, so check this, right? After nine eleven, after September the eleventh. Um, in 2001, did we suddenly did the TSA stop existing? Um, it, the TSA like, like ramped up after that. And we just all got used to it. We just got used to taking off your shoes in a, in a line at the airport and, you know, only carrying a hundred mil bottles of liquid where before you were like, here's my 1.5 liter tub of coconut oil in my bag. That's totally normal. Right. Um, and no one batted an eyelid. And now it's like, you just used to it. So I think all of this stuff, the, the cell phone tracking, the, um, the governmental overreach, the enforcement of some of the stuff, it's, it's not going to ease up the way people think it will. I think we, I really, really believe we're entering a new world and we're going to get, we have to get used to it. Hmm. But I think as you said, it it's needs scary. to be a lot more, uh, user friendly before a lot of people start using it because yeah, yeah but I mean, end, like the, yeah, yeah. But like that. now these companies are forced, right. To, to make this stuff user friendly. Yeah, they have to. I, I guess so. Time yeah. is of the essence. 
Yeah, I, that's true. I guess we'll see. Did we lose Samson? Yeah. I think he rage quit. He decided I'm right he was here. Go join <laughs> <laughs> hey, Samson. Oh yeah. So where's where's Jolly? <laughs> Oh, here's oh, Samson. Yeah. He's over there. That's Samson. <laughs> like quest pro. <press. laughs> stage diving. <laughs> Welcome back, Samson. That's You're the interactivity of VR. At least yeah. Yeah. he was able to get early. Get back in. Every year. Always has to, has to make a... Days. Almost a... Entrance. Yeah, I know. <laughs> really crap. <laughs> <laughs> blame, blame Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, it's Facebook's fault. Where were we? Rick was rambling on about something. Right? <laughs> he was rambling on about privacy you, in you the new post corona world. Thing. Okay, you I missed it. Yeah. Getting so, and I need to do something now. One second. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Bullshit, Rick. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, the normal plebs are going to be able to use real privacy tech. It's uh, a ways away for all of them. Like no one's going to be use BLE mesh. Like most people can't even use a VR headset, or the cost make it prohibitive. Um, I think it's a long ways to go before anyone's going to even do anything because most people are indoctrinated to just uh, behave like sheep and report their neighbors. That's true. Because the government told them to report their neighbors. So, you know, I, I think we need like a hard reset for things really, really change because most people don't understand it and then you're not going to do so anything. You're suggesting we kill everyone and start afresh. No, I'm yeah, that's what I uh, thought too. It's, that's what it sounds like. Themselves. One, two people. And then you start the war. <laughs> I mean, that's, this is going to be great. Start the simulation. That's this great. Is how yeah, you guys war have the best solutions. On, yeah. World War Three started on UD's uh, VR panel. Like this is what mm -hmm. historians will will note. Mm -hmm. Before yes. Grand Grand Admiral Samson Mao took to his throne <laughs> and <laughs> ruled over Mao. Yeah, that's... yeah. Well, the good news is that if you're killing everyone, we don't need a lockdown anymore. Well, so there are upsides. Kill themselves. Like it's just Worrying people point. doing stupid shit and. Uh, you know, it's questionable if the U.S. economy can recover if um, there's a massive uh, infection disabling key services like uh, health, infrastructure, electrical. <laughs> if people can't do anything, then it kind of crumbles on its own. What are you doing, Rick? I, I got lost. <laughs> I, you're, I was coming the, up towards you because your, your ramble was so boring and then I got lost. <laughs> <laughs> The best way to troll someone in VR is to start moving when someone else is talking, and then all the attention goes to the person moving. So Ricardo figured it out. Sorry, that was totally accidental. I apologize. Sorry, Samson. Carry on. Carry on. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. No, but that's that's bullshit. It is. My bad. Yeah. Wait, you have to like look at your hands for a second and try to figure out. Wait, wait, one sec, one sec. It's like, it's like, Guys, I'm sorry. It. This is their first time. They're learning how to use their hands right now, but they'll figure it out. Good, good. Very oh, you good. Need to make sound effects too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where that's high production value right there. Exactly. That's nice. <laughs> I'm game what, what, did they, what did they expect when you arrived with the four of us? I mean, come on. Whoa. No, I didn't them? expect anything else. This Whoa. is exactly what I expected. There are people up on the yeah. ceiling. <laughs> people are falling from the sky, oh, literally. <laughs> it's it's raining and, people. And the funny thing is now you see everyone looking up. That's like the best part. <laughs> <laughs> look at him. Hello. Half at him. Yeah, <laughs> <who is that? laughs> okay, don't it's jump. Amazing. Everything will be hey, okay. Hey, Jason. Don't jump, Jason. It's don't jump. It's don't not worth it. it. No, don't do it. It's not worth no! it. No! <laughs> Bitcoin will come off oh, the offering. Don't worry. It's number That one. was hard to watch. <laughs> <laughs> number now everyone's going to jump. No. Yeah, now everyone's going to jump. Oh, that's, no. That's how it always works. <laughs> <like. It> <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna move on. Samson mentioned the, the U.S. economy, and uh, I've heard some people saying things like, "Oh, maybe banks are going to crash, and maybe there's gonna be a run on the banks." 
and maybe we should go to ATMs and pull out all the funds while we still can. See, that point right there, Rudy, is why yep. I don't think uh, tech will help because people are making a run on the bank to get paper that's being printed instead of buying Bitcoin. If uh, yeah. you mm -hmm. saw like, people mass buying Bitcoin because they're trying to opt out of the, the economy, that would give me hope. But if people are running to the ATM, that's like, you know, caveman times. Are, are they yeah. though? Are, are they really running to the banks? I, In some they, they no, I don't know if people are actually doing it. The banks. But I, I think it's calmed down mm -hmm. though. I mean, it seems to have calmed down anyway. Some bank in the U.S. they just uh, folded, and some other bank bought them. I think they're like really a, half a million or one million short on funds or something like that. Half a million, hundreds of billions of dollars. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay, so um, don't go bankrupt over half a million. Yeah, I I, I really don't don't see that happening that much, and. Um, Crossbow. Yeah. But, uh, what? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> what, what's crossbow? I, I mean, what's a crossbow? No, but, but, but come on. I, what, what are you going to do with all of cash? First of all, they can confiscate it as well if they want. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time that in the US we hear it all the time that uh, they, they confiscated large amounts of cash just because they can. Um, they don't even need a reason for that. Uh, and, so what's the point of it? And in a lot of countries, there are also limits of how much you can buy with, with cash. Like in, in Belgium, for example, you cannot buy for more than 3,000 uh, euro worth of stuff um, at one time. And in other countries, it's like 1,000 euro um, in cash. And if you go to the bus, deposit it back at some point to the bank, they're going to ask where you got it from. And good yeah. luck explaining that. Hmm. Um, because I just sold a, a car for 10,000 euros. That's not working because you're not allowed to accept that. So, yeah. Hmm. I'm very skeptical. Well, about you can the buy the running. car back. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Bar from the crowd says that the bank that collapses Capital One in the US. I have no idea if it's true. Maybe he's trolling me, but that's what he says. No, it's not. It's not Capital One. So doing? he's trolling me. He's definitely, definitely not trying <laughs> But that's fun. Capital One wouldn't, wouldn't go bankrupt over half a million dollars, right? No. no. Probably. <laughs> no. <laughs> so what's the, he's, what's he's laughing. He's over there laughing. So, um, so the, the nice last try. thing I think before we go and take some questions is, um, is masks. I've seen some of you talk about masks. Wear so what, what, what do we do about Wear the mask, mask situation? Because, Wear mask. because Wear look, mask. Yeah, yes. I don't know, all the, all the countries together, like in one day, it, if you look at three days ago, everyone said you don't need masks, every country in the world. Then in one day, everyone is suddenly saying that you need masks. It's like, insane. yeah, but it's cause of, it's cause of the, the WHO and the CDC turning around on it. Right. But I, I mean, think the WHO the still didn't turn around. Yeah. Oh, they, haven't, it, it, they haven't turned around, but there's, They've acknowledged some of the, the mask stuff. But here's the thing, right? Wear a mask because it defeats like uh, facial recognition technology. Who cares about the viruses? Wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's the thing about the mask work. is it, the recommendation was so dumb initially, right? They're like, because you, there's asymptomatic transmission, but only wear a mask if you're, if you're showing symptoms. Like, yes, or if you come sense. into contact with someone who shows <laughs> symptoms. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> it's so dumb. Well, in Belgium, they're still yeah, saying yeah, well, that it, it, really uh, dumb. it's dumb and you don't have to wear a mask. So um, it it's, makes no sense. But, but I think it's also like the, part of the, rec the, the rationalization there was to save all the PPE for hospitals and emergency workers. But all they've done is confuse everyone. <laughs> Well, I saw one of the memes saying that you should only wear a condom if you have HIV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, 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 only, only wear a condom if you're already pregnant. Yeah. Otherwise, if, there's, if, there's really no reason if you, to... If you come into contact with someone who has it, you know. 
and did, yeah. you, did you guys see that tweet uh, from uh, from Lop? He's sitting right over there um, about a guy who uh, got all his masks confiscated um, because he was uh, selling it for uh, seven. Yeah. Months, the, the no, actually, that's yeah. There's a lot of people getting masks confiscated. So I posted one video of some guy getting a whole bunch confiscated, but there's actually like sting operations everywhere, and even in Canada, they're trying to like take masks that you're reselling. They don't want you to resell at all. But the yes, other thing too only is the like, government, only the government can engage in price gouging, not anyone. Else. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like the mafia, right? Not, no, not part of the family. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't know. You got to make them an the offer they can't refuse. Right. Yeah. The mass topic. I think there is evidence that shows that masks work. And they kept saying there is no evidence that shows it works. So a lot of these guys are just lying through their teeth. And even in Canada, like the chief public health officer was on TV saying, yeah, they don't work. Uh, we have no evidence. And it's just appalling that you can see people lying or yeah. stupid, but it doesn't really matter. It's kind of like, what's the definition of a scammer? Do they know they're a scammer or they're a scammer because they scammed you? And it's the same thing. Like either they're malicious or they're stupid, but uh, there's no excuse for that. Yeah, I guess. Well, like that's, key, what, that's where we have to... Back to normal is really yeah. um, getting masks into the hands of people. Either you can tell them to make their own, which they didn't do. They just said they don't work. I think now in the yeah. US they said make your own, but Canada hasn't yet backtracked on that statement. <clears throat> um, or make the masks and distribute them or sell them or whatever. But if you can get masks into the hands of the populace, that slows the spread and it lets you get the economy back on track rather than killing and, the economy. Yeah, and Asia's been doing it for, for ages, for like, you know, like what, a decade and a half. We're just yeah. slow to catch up in the rest of the world. Oh, yeah. Like the, I, I went to one grocery store they actually had a sign saying, um, our staff are wearing masks not because they're sick, but they're trying to protect you. <laughs> it's like you yeah. have to spell <laughs> it out. Like, yeah, uh, this is how the mask generally <laughs> work. So... Well, that's it, right? Because, because the CDC uh, told people that they should only wear a mask if you're sick. Then people who go outside with their masks, everyone else thinks they're sick. So people are actually afraid to go out with masks because they don't want others to actually, like, but beat them up. Actually, actually that's great happened. if other people think you're sick. They avoid you. So that's a good thing. <laughs> no, they beat you up. <laughs> Why? Like, yeah, well, come beat up. you up and then they, they get They just start coughing and yes. they will... Back off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sick. Oh, great. <laughs> it's great that you can cough in VR. Let me you do it with the but, hand I, I, too, but you should use your elbow, ideally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah, know. But we won't see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think, yeah, I think what we're going to do now is we're going to take some questions from the audience because this is an interactive show. So, What's going to happen now is you're going to have a raise hand button appear on the right bottom uh, part of your screen. Just click that. Uh, what Charlie, happens if you raise that. Your <laughs> yeah. Charlie, you can just <laughs> speak. You, you don't need to ask for permission. But... <laughs> me, me, me next. Me next. So, yes, yes. <laughs> so let's start with uh, three, three something. Three D Y D Y. You can you can you can speak now and show us an emoji so we can see where you are. Yes. Hello. I'm over here to the right on the far corner. Yep. Okay. All right. Mine's a fairly simple question. First of all, it's amazing to meet you all uh, in VR. So thank you for coming out for this and everybody else. This is incredible. My next question was basically uh, since uh, the start of this whole crypto revolution, you know, basically 12 years ago after being a result of, you know, the financial crisis, where do you see yourselves working in the next 12 years, you know, as the space evolves even further? I mean, working. Hmm. <laughs> what, what, what is work? Yeah, what is work? Is work? Working seems like a stretch. <laughs> No, I think, I think like, I, I don't know. I don't know about everyone else here, but I, I think I, I definitely want to, uh, and I have started already, but I want to spend more time doing volunteer work and less time doing, uh, you know, building businesses, doing work that earns money. 
Um, and so I've, I've been doing that for the past year, um, increasing the amount of volunteer work I do. And my plan is to, at the moment, I'm doing um, 16 hours a week. And my aim is to eventually get to a point where uh, I'm doing four days volunteer work and then leaving one day for secular work. Um, you know, that's, that's sort of where I plan on going over the next 12 years. Because I think that there are a lot of people who just can't benefit from the cool stuff we've built and the, the stuff we've worked on. So there's an opportunity to, to educate, but there's an also, also an opportunity to help people who are just in a less fortunate position. And what kind of uh, volunteer work are you talking about then? So, I, yeah, sure. So, I mean, a lot of my focus is on educating. Um, I think that, uh, that, that there's a big gap there. Um, um, teaching people is something that I've, I've really enjoyed. Um, and, uh, it can be, it can be challenging, um, because a lot of the, the people that you interact with are at least here in South Africa, um, like you don't, they don't have a strong foundation. So it's difficult to, to, to build on a foundation that's non-existent. So sometimes you find yourself like backtracking and going like, okay, let's deal with this very foundational thing. Let's deal with grass is green and the sky is blue before we can go on to, you know, why do stars exist? Um, it's, you've really got to start at, at, at fundamentals with a lot of this stuff. Uh, but I, I think by, by going through this process and by helping people, um, through a process of education, which, yeah, so, you know, sometimes it, it does deal with issues of self sovereignty and, and, uh, and freedom and that sort of thing. But I think by focusing on an education, on some sort of educational work, um, that's more my calling on this side than like working in a soup kitchen where I don't think I'd, I'd be able to, to, to give as much value. So you want to do TED Talk? Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming yeah. to my TED Talk. <laughs> I'm hoping to go uh, be the CEO of the Ethereum Foundation. That's where I'm aiming at. <laughs> Hopefully soon. If Trump um, does buy you first. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I never want to work for uh, for people again, and that includes investors. So I'm looking for like, I would do startup investing, uh, like some VC stuff, but other than that, uh, angel investing, but other than that, not much. Because yeah. I don't want to have a responsibility towards other people, and I don't want anyone telling me what to do, basically. Uh, I've, I've done enough of that uh, <laughs> during my last 15 years. <laughs> uh, so you're just going to trade shit coins forever? I, no, no, not even that. I'm just going to uh, invest in like uh, projects, even if they're like scammy, like infinite fleet and stuff like that. Um, that's good. Ooh. That's good to know. So I, I have some proposals for you. There's no such thing as bad book. <laughs> Thank you. Why don't you tell us more about infinite fleet, Samson? I will. Oh, no. Not, Why did you give us more about liquid? <laughs> more about what? We, we haven't spoken about liquid once this entire time. Why? I talked to Andrew <laughs> earlier. Okay. Yeah, probably. You go. Um, well, you know, once since I got into this space, uh, how long ago was this? Nine years ago? It's been such a crazy ride. I don't think I'll do anything other than crypto. So, yeah. That or I'm going to be... But, Retired on an island somewhere. I think I think it's a Like uh, Steve Jobs going back to Apple. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. <laughs> you you can save. You heard it here after, first. After Brian tanks it. Uh, um, for oh, me, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. I like what I'm doing at Blockstream. I think we're doing a lot of transformative things. I think there's a lot more I want to do. Uh, bringing privacy tech into more people's hands. And I like making games. Like, I don't know. I would just keep making games and doing what I'm doing now. Hopefully, VR games. Maybe. Maybe <laughs> VR games. Maybe. Maybe. That sounds like a good idea. Yes. Let's take the next question from Zender. Zender, go ahead and show us where you are. Hello. Yeah. I'm here. Hey. Okay. This is a question for Charlie and Samson. Uh, in three days, we have there's the halv halving of Bcash, and for uh, 36 days, it will be two times more profitable to mine Bitcoin. Probably in this period. 
to cash gets attacked in the spirit. Let me think. You want to go first? Yeah, I, to be honest, I thought people would attack the cash even today, given how me low too. the cash rate is today. <laughs> so the fact that people aren't means that it's just not profitable. It's just not worth it for them. It's kind of and no one cares. Whatever. Yeah. So I think that said, I think I don't think anything will happen in three days. But you never know. This is crypto. So yeah, it's really like, um, is it worth my time to attack this piece of garbage? Like people have tweeted like, oh, Blockstream, you guys have uh, miner. Why don't you guys attack it? Well, first of all, you wouldn't do that. But then if you really wanted to do that, you know, is it really worth it? Because they would just uh, you know, reboot or go back a few blocks and you know, it's centralized garbage anyways, but there's no point. And I don't know if it would die after they're having because I think they also have a lot of ideological miners like Roger and friends. Like he's probably having his company so he can continue mining eCash at a loss or whatever. Like Roger and Roger and Roger. <laughs> Roger and <laughs> quote and quote unquote. Friend. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, cool. Thanks. So, so why did you ask question... us instead of those uh, two guys also? Because, because we, uh, we only know stuff about scam coins. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> uh, you're racist. Next... Oh, I don't say that. <laughs> Just because you're on the, I know because you're you're on the right side of the of stage, that's yeah. the only reason. Yeah. Rudy did a little bit of that... racial segregation here. <laughs> Why are the Asians there? Why are the Asians there? Exactly. It's, Why are the cool guys it's, it's, we're on, here? We're on the right. We're extremely right. Yeah, we're it's the, the order right. of the colors, the alphabetical order of the colors or something, maybe. Yeah. Ricky no, Lowe, right? No, that's, that's doesn't work. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> doesn't work. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll skirt this question by moving on. It's to because JC. we are the primary colors and they have the secondary okay, colors. Okay, um, my question is for Charlie and uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. here by the way. My question is for Charlie and uh, you know, I'm a huge Lightning Network supporter um, and also a Charlie Lee fan, but I, I do want to ask about <laughs> the bet with uh, Roger Ver from the uh, last uh, Lightning debate you guys had last year. Did that resolve and what was the outcome? If uh, people don't remember, there was a bet, I think, that there would be more than a thousand merchants accepting Lightning in a year or 18 months, and I think now is, is around that time. Sure, yeah. So first of all, I want to say I'm also a huge Lightning Network supporter and also a huge Charlie Lee fan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <he's> <laughs> <a number laughs> one Charlie Lee. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, so the bet was that a year and a half ago, uh, Raj and I were on a cruise together. We made a bet that um, today or after a year and a half, there's going to be there's going to be a thousand Lightning Network merchants. Why would anyone um, go on a cruise with Raj? Well, it was a, it was I, I, I a Bitcoin conference to that as well, but, uh... <laughs> It was a Bitcoin conference cruise. He happened to be there also. I didn't expect to see him there. Um, did, did, wait, wait. Did you do the, the Titanic move with Roger? Go stand in the front and do the like... what? Titanic. Titanic move. No. No, definitely not. So you have to go on a cruise with Roger again. I don't think I'll ever go on a cruise again. Hmm. <laughs> <We'll see. laughs> Given the whole story is we had these cruises recently. Uh, um, yeah. Anyways, so the bet was Ethereum a thousand yeah, Lightning Network merchants. And Roger actually last week, I think a week or two weeks ago, came out, did a video and said that he won the bet because he couldn't find a site that lists more than like a thousand merchants. Um, but I actually reach out to all the merchant processors and like, for example, CoinGate says they have like four or 5,000 merchants. Um, uh, who else? Like, uh, uh, there's a Globy, right? Globy um, said that they have a few hundred merchants. Um, I mean, there's a, once you add it all up, there's like almost 10,000 merchants that accept Lightning Network payments. So unfortunately, Roger is saying that because they don't list them publicly, like you can't, because, because of privacy, they don't list all their merchants in, this, in the directory. So because of that, he's saying that he, he won because I can't prove and verify that there are more than 1,000 merchants. 
I said whatever. So he's saying that he won because he can't find a centralized website that lists all the decentralized Correct. users of a Correct. Whatever. Correct. He said trust no. don't verify. And I'm yeah. like, whatever. Nice. Well So I don't know. What do you what do you think I should do? I mean I, I don't I don't really care about this bet, but I don't think he's pushing it either, so hmm. I don't, I don't I mean, have it's, any ideas for you. It, it, it's just going to, you're just going to be, it's like arguing with a yak, you know, I mean, why would you bother? <laughs> at lion. some point, the yak's going to get lion. bug you. Sea lion. You know, or a sea lion. I don't know. Just... <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, let's take the last question from Ben. Ben, go ahead. Hey, thanks. Just show us where you are. Sh- throw an emoji. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yep. Go ahead. I, I don't know where my mother is. No, it's okay. Hey, we'll I'm right you. here, guys. I'm right yeah, here. Top, top. Yeah, <laughs> okay, we can see. Yeah. I can hello, see. hello. There we go. Uh, so my question is for uh, Ricardo Spagni. Um, so. Spani. Spani. Sorry. <laughs> Shh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we like. I think the most interesting thing about Bitcoin is the uh, the immutable supply that will never change. Um, and we know that there have been, you know, like CVE inflation bugs in Bitcoin, which arguably has many more eyes on it than, um, than Monero. So I just wonder, you know, what is your position on the potential inflation bugs that might happen on Monero and how would you guard against that? And are there ways to cryptographically prove the supply without, um, compromising security? It's a great question. Um, so there are a couple of things I think that, uh, Part of Monero's value proposition is that you take a different set of trade-offs than you do with Bitcoin. So you don't have a um, amount sort of visible. So you don't have the same supply auditability guarantees that you get with Bitcoin. At the same time, you get the privacy that you don't get with Bitcoin. So it's trade-offs. You're choosing to use one thing that's similar but different set of trade-offs to the other. At the same time, there are definitely things that Monero can and should do and will do to improve those um, supply guarantees to the best possible thing that it can do. And one of the big things there are the ring signatures um, as with confidential transactions. So confidential transactions, um, as used on Monero, hides transaction amounts, and it does so um, using uh, basically, um, instead of storing the amount for a transaction, uh, you store this thing that that, uh, that represents the amount. And then in order to make sure that um, that you can, you're not creating money out of thin air, you do this arithmetic to say, um, okay, all of the things that we're using to represent amounts on the output of the transaction, minus all of the things we're using to represent the uh, amounts on the input, like cancel out. And you just got to then prove that both of those are positive so that your positive total minus your, your um, other total equals zero. And so to prove that both of these um, are, or these commitments are, or set of commitments are positive numbers, you have to use this thing called uh, range proofs. And range proofs are particularly big, commitments are particularly painful. So all of this leads to very big transactions. Now, as it becomes particularly complex, we can switch from Peterson commitments, which we're currently using to Elgamal commitments. Um, Elgamal commitments are different to Peterson commitments in that they are, where, where Peterson commitments are computationally uh, binding, but they are, um, but they, they are uh, high, sorry, other way around, no wait. Computation, yeah, computationally binding, binding, perfectly hiding, which means that they hide the values very well, like it's impossible to figure out. But in terms of the, the um, whether this thing is, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> it, <laughs> well, Funny man. I want to um, hear the answer. Ter- <laughs> yeah. That's so the in terms of, of in terms of whether it is um, whether it is bound to the actual number, that's a little bit more challenging. So Olgamal commitments are the opposite, right? They buy, they're bound to the number in a perfect way. So there's there's a lot more supply chain or supply guarantee, supply auditability. But the downside is that it's computationally hiding. So then your your trade off is there's a risk from a privacy perspective that maybe some computer in the future or some, you know, some algorithm in the future can break your privacy and figure out the amounts. 
although that's unlikely, but at least you've got these stronger guarantees when it comes to um, the supply. So maybe that's something that happens in future, but Algomol commitments are much bigger than Peterson commitments. And so right now, just, you know, the internet couldn't handle that. So it's not even, it's not worth considering at this point, but maybe in future. Wow, thanks. That's a yes or no question, right? <laughs> no, it's not. But, but even remotely. Ricardo, can like... you repeat that? I missed that answer. <laughs> <laughs> is it a yes or no question? That's like, no, it's not. Um, it, that's like saying, is the game that Samson making, ma Samson's making a scam? I mean, that's a yes or no question, no. Samson. What is the answer? It's a no. It's a no. <laughs> Why is it a no, Samson? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, thanks for the question, Ben. And, and thanks for the novel, uh, Fluffy. That was great. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It was a good answer. It was a good answer. I liked it. I liked it. Thank I you. also liked caressing your hair. Um, I, Thank I like you. I'll be here all week. So you got nothing better to do. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's true. Beat Saber. Beat Saber. Exactly. Well, guys, thanks a lot. Thanks you, Charlie, for the, this is nice. It feels nice. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming. This was a lot of fun. Um, is there anything you want to show or say before before I mute you? <laughs> Looks like a no. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, oh. no, okay. Well, maybe be on the lookout for <laughs> uh, some MC virtual stuff, MCC virtual stuff. I don't know. What do you think, Samson? Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> That's good. Maybe be on the lookout. That's good. I like it. Um, so, so really thank you guys for doing this. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you didn't suffer too much too. Um, also I want to say awesome thanks to, to our moderators who help us here. That's, um, GC and GG over there and bar. So thanks a lot for that. Um, next week we're going to have a talk by Rodolfo Novak of cold card and oh. point kite. I, I don't think he's here. Is he here? Not no, here. Rodolfo's not here. Otherwise, he would be yeah. doing something stupid. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, yeah, he's going to be here next week. And if that sounds fun or any other VR meetups that we're doing sound fun, then you should join the Telegram group. That's t.me slash VR Bitcoin. 